Maximilian Carlo Martini was born in New York to an Italian father and an American mother. He is a citizen of the United States, Canada, and Italy and speaks Italian fluently. His Roman father was a sculptor and doctor of philosophy and phenomenology and instilled in him an appreciation for all things created. His mother was a Texas law enforcement officer. After moving around a bit as a child, Martini made his way back to New York City and began to study acting. He started out at the neighborhood playhouse in Tennessee, but did the majority of his training privately with Michael Howard in Manhattan. After launching Theater North Collaborative in New York City and staging new works from both the United States and Canada, Martini took a break from the stage to focus on his early love of fine art. He attended the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan, where he received a BFA in painting and sculpture. Martini starred in George Clooney's feature, The Tender Bar for Amazon Studios, as well as the recently aired USN Network television series, The Purge. In 2019, he completed directing his second feature film, The Manson Brothers' Midnight Zombie Massacre, his directorial debut. Sergeant Will Gardner he starred in along with Omari Hardin, Lily Ray, Robert Patrick, Dermot Mulroney, Elizabeth Rome, and Gary Sinise. Martini starred in season one of the Netflix series The Order. Additionally, he starred in Bigger, Michael Bay's 13 Hours, Del Toro's Pacific Rim, and Paul Greengrass' Captain Phillips. Martini is recognized from such films as Steven Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan, The Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, David Mamet's Red Belt, David Ayer's Sabotage, and the legendary Hubersal feature Spectrum. Max Martini also starred in the television series, the unit which ran for four years on CBS. Max Martini has over 32 film titles and 200 segments of television. Welcome to the show. We fight monsters today. I got the great Max Martini on. And uh, look, man, he's got a fantastic fan base. This guy has done amazing movies, all right? And if you don't know who he is, Google him, all right? 13 Hours, The Unit, Saving Private Ryan, Spectral, which I watched. Watched that today. Hadn't seen it. And I was like, what is this movie? Why did this movie not get more notoriety? Okay. And then I found out he did a lot of other things. Hawaii Five-0, you know, uh, a guest appearance. Uh, uh, Sergeant Will Gardner, which I definitely watched. And then uh, Burn Notice. Didn't even know he's on Burn Notice. So I missed that. So anyhow, Max, how are you today, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, you've got just a fantastic resume. And I was going through and I, I found a lot. I Listen, we even saw My Little Pony, so we're going to talk about that. Right, right, because right. I don't know <laughs> how you transitioned for the movies you were doing to that. Maybe it was the balance uh, out everything. But um, got some questions for you. And, you know, just really, you've got uh, this acting that you do. And I, and I saw Sergeant Will Gardner. And in there, you're talking about, uh, in the beginning scene, you're, you're, you're actually uh, doing, doing, you're doing Robert Frost. And yeah. then Sir Francis Drake. And at the end of the movie was Edgar Allan Poe. And it's just fascinating to me. So there's this artistic sensibility that you put into your movies. Mm -hmm. And it tells me that even though you have this incredible persona on screen as this warfighter there's this artistic sensibility that you have as well where does that come from i mean it come from your family did that come from school where, where'd you pick that up did well my, that? my father uh, was a sculptor so he um uh, you know uh, he and uh, introed me to the arts and uh and then my mother who was in law enforcement uh she uh married a remarried uh an actor director named Stuart margolin and uh, he came into my life when i was about i guess about 10 11 years old and uh and so he kind of dangled you know the 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 film and television world in front of me a little bit and he'd throw me into things with that he was directing and um and so i i got the bug but i actually went to art school i, I got my degree in fine arts and then when I got out of art school, I got asked to audition for a uh, a uh, uh, a movie, and I got flown to Los Angeles, and I got it, and, and I just got uh, I took a detour and never went back to art. But um, but I, you know, I've always had an appreciation for it, and and uh, uh, you know, and I I I, I thought. The, I had a buddy that that you know was struggling with PTS and and uh, distractions uh, seemed to f distractions that he was passionate about seemed to help and and uh, and were recommended to him and so you know I, I gave that character in the movie uh, you know this love of reading 
this kind of uh, and and getting lost in these words and these these uh, you know poems that would you know inspire him to uh, to heal and move forward. So it worked for the story, and you know, and I thought uh, I thought the the combination of the two uh, was uh, as far as the film went was uh, was kind of cool. No, I, I really liked it. Some people didn't like it, but I did. I mean, I thought it was like uh, rituals, like a rosary. You know, you're you're saying things as a way to push away the universe and to uh, handle what what's inside that world of yours, that structure that you create because you're yeah. dealing with the stress, and so you're trying to contain that. And that's what I got out of it. Is that correct? Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, look, I mean, there. You know, I did. I did. Uh, th th I did that movie at a, at a point in, in my life. I, I was already on the unit. I'd, I'd gone overseas to, to you know meet with the guys and the troops uh, a couple times already, and uh, you know I was so inspired to to get involved in military charity work and and uh, you know dedicate my celebrity and my efforts to to, to, to helping veterans because I'm a, I'm a huge patriot and. Uh, you know, but I'm also an artist, and it was my way of kind of say, fusing the two worlds together. You know, I, I know a lot of guys, man, that that have come back from combat uh, and and have found themselves. You know, I, for instance, Warrior's Heart uh, is one of the charities, one of the foundations that I support. Run started by a former uh, Delta operator buddy of mine, and uh, you know, they have a whole program, art program for their veterans that are suffering they go into the you know the woodworking sh the wood shop or they go into the metal shop and they make flags and they make artwork and you know it's i mean it's a real thing it's a bit it's like animals art things that that help you you know heal and i felt it important that you know people that don't understand it or didn't like it may not have yet been introduced to it you know because it truly is an outlet uh, for a lot of people that are suffering, and uh, you know, and and it helps me. I mean, I don't have those uh, those ailments, but it definitely helps me. Uh, it, but you you understand that as an artist, I think you get into the sensibility of man or humanity. I mean, I got that when I watched the movie. I mean, I, I saw him as a shambling mess, and I, I I saw this guy as a shambling wreck, you know, going around trying to figure things out. And I got that. And so I could see it through the movie where there's flashbacks. So he's reciting the poetry, right? And then it goes back to the flashbacks of the combat scenes. And again, it becomes this thing of structure, no structure. So the combat is all kinetic. And then you go back to the poetry, which brings it all together. These things that are important, these things that make us human, these things that make us uh, peaceful beings, these, these things that we love, that we are so far away from, right? So mm -hmm. veterans go away and they go into war and it's very dynamic, very kinetic. And then they come back. What do they do? People say, oh, OK, they shoot guns. Well, yeah, they do. But a lot of veterans I know and a lot of the guys that I know in you know, special forces or soft are planting gardens or they're doing pottery yeah. or they're doing woodworking or knife making or something that creates versus destroying. You know, and that's the way I got, I I mean, got out of Will Gardner. I, I just think it's whatever therapy works for you. I mean, a lot of guys, you know, range therapy works. It works for me too. I love thinking I'm shooting, man. I mean, yeah. you know, um, but, uh, you know, motorcycles, right? That was another thing. It's like, yeah. I know so many veterans that ride. I'm a huge biker and I, and, uh, you know, there's, so, the, so it's, it's just finding your, you know, right. the mechanism that helps you move forward, right? So let's talk about shooting. I mean, so I saw you with Taran Tactical, and uh, you're obviously very capable. So did you always get into firearms? I mean, where, where did your experience with firearms come into? In the teen years? Well, or I, you know, um, well, like I said, my mother was in law enforcement. Okay. So there were there were always um, guns in the house. And um, but I did Saving Private Ryan. That was my first uh, military film. And, uh, and it was my first training experience. So every time, we, you know, you do one of these movies, and th I, I've been so fortunate as to have been part of these big ones. Um, so I've gotten great training uh, and from really, you know, high speed tier one guys. And, and, uh, and uh, I, I think I just kind of, you know, when I got taken out live fire training and, and I fell in love with it, man. I realized I was good at it, and, you know. 
uh, and I fell in love with uh, the retelling of these stories, you know. And so I, I realized at a certain point that I had a passion for, I love tactics. I love tactical work. I love CQB. I, you know, that's, that's kind of, uh, that's my Disneyland. But, um, but I also feel like I have a responsibility to portray soldiers properly and to not, you know, uh, you know, give it 48 hours of training and go in and, and wing it. You know, it's like you want to, I mean, the way that, that the guys that I, you know, portray operate, you can't wing it. You know, you got to know what you're doing. So, um, so I put the hours in, man, and, and I love it. You know, I'm, a, I'm out there a lot. No, actually, it, what's funny is all the veterans I know that watch movies pull movies apart. So that that part was wrong. That part was wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah. I'll tell you, I saw the unit and I, I saw you saluting. I said, he got it right, man. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you snapped that. And I'm like, you know, it's not all bent. It's not all yeah. weird. And I said, yeah. thank God. God bless this guy. You know, we so, had uh, so um, those that, that, that are sort of aware of how that that series came to be. We, it was uh, inspired and taken by a book that Del that uh, Eric Haney wrote called Inside Delta Force, and, and uh, a lot of controversy there. I know he, uh, there were some guys that weren't happy he wrote that, but but you know it uh, inspired this show, and we had a huge fan base, <clears throat> and Eric was on set uh, for a long time. Uh, he uh, was there, you know, every second of the day that we were filming, making sure that we got things right, that, that you know, we, that we were tactically sound. And, uh, you know, and then we had Pete Blaver come on. He's another uh, Delta commander. Yeah, I interviewed Pete uh, last year. Great guy. Did, yeah. Super duper smart. Yeah. So very smart. Great guy. Really smart. Um, you know, so we so we had guys on set making sure it was it was running smoothly and you know, properly. So I saw uh, a, a YouTube video you did with Michael Hearn and uh, uh, Jonathan, right? So, uh, and it was interesting to me. So, you you know, you got these friends and you guys talk about, uh, you know, not being, you know, like Hollywood. And, and, and so what I'm asking is, um, what do you think of as your peers or your mentors or who, who do you fraternize with outside of Hollywood? Are there, is it a certain grouping or demographic that you like to fraternize with and hang out and learn from outside of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, honestly, like I have a, my sort of base of friends are largely military. Ah. Uh, it's kind of, it's, you know, my, my, I have, I have a group of buddies that, that we go, back 30 years and we've, we've stayed super tight that I grew up with and uh, you know, they're actors, but they're not, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, there's a, they're just, they're, they're, they're guys that, you know, want to pay the bills that have a special talent and, and, and nobody's in it to, you know, become famous or nobody's in it to, you know, but there, but then, but then outside of uh, this industry, you know, it's, it's primarily, I have military buddies, man. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm in this, you know, th this business is so consuming that, that, uh, you know, and you're constantly hustling for work and every time a job comes up, you know, unless it's a career ender, you, you pretty much have to take it unless you're in a position, you know, which I'm not in that position where I can, you know, I have the luxury of uh, turning down huge money jobs because I have a family to support, but it's, uh, uh, but I try to be selective if I'm, if I'm able to. No, that's a great, that's a great answer because I didn't know how that works. So you have to take certain jobs and that makes sense. And, you know, I've, I've seen it even in our own, you know, uh, industry, uh, you turn down a job and they just don't call you anymore, yeah. but you've had some great, you know, great movies. I mean, The Great Ray, 13 Hours. I mean, these are fantastic. You were even in Red Belt, which I did not know, which is one of my favorite movies, oh, which well. a lot of people haven't even heard about or they, they pan it. But I love that movie. But you're in there. Uh, and, and so you've done quite a bit. Now you've taken on this new TV series, right? With uh, Bosch, right? So I did one Jones. season of Bosch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I only did one season. So it, it, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not continuing on it. But uh, okay. Titus, Titus Welliver is an old buddy of mine, another one that goes back 30 years. And, and uh, 
uh, super fun to get on screen with him. And, and, uh, and yeah, and that was at home, which is nice too. That was a luxury that was in Los Angeles. So, so what are, what are your, you know, what's your favorite movie role of all the action roles that you did? And, you know, uh, is there a particular movie that you didn't care, care to make? That I didn't care to make? Yeah. Uh, there's a couple. Okay. That I didn't care to make. Yeah, and if you don't have, if you don't have to tell us. But... <laughs> there's a handful that I wish would go yeah. away. Right. Well, oh, how about oh. your favorite movie role? What was your favorite action role of all the movies, like the 13 hours of units? Wow. Um, you know. And, and, and um, why? Uh, pro well, I, I, I'll tell you what. So I, 13 hours was the most meaningful for me. Um, one, because uh, it, there were a lot of elements in that film that I, I thought the public wasn't aware of that I thought needed to, 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 to get out. Uh, uh, horrible what happened to those guys and Chris Stevens. And I, and I just uh, uh, was very excited to be part of that. Very excited to play Mark Geist who I don't know if you've seen us together, but we look so much. Have. <laughs> yeah. You guys look like, like brothers almost. Yeah. Very, yeah. very close. Uh, and we bonded. I love the get the guys that, uh, that we played. And, and um, so I think that was one of my favorite uh, features. Uh, creatively. I did a movie that George Clooney directed called the tinder bar with uh, Ben Affleck and that, that came out uh, at the tail end of the pandemic. And uh, so creatively, that was probably my favorite uh, role that I've played. Um, it was just, I played a really awful chain smoking, uh, boozy uh, kind of, you know, horrible father to the, the lead kid. And, but it was a character that I got to, that I don't get to play often that I really got to sing my teeth into. And, yeah. You uh, do a lot of heroic roles. Uh, do yeah. you know Chris Peranto at all? I mean, did you get to meet him as well? Yeah, yeah of okay. course. Yeah. yeah he, he's great, man. I, he came on my show and I was yeah. blown away. He, he actually said he's going to blow his brains out in the shower. Uh, and I was just like stunned, you know, so uh, because we did the, the episode 10 years after Benghazi and I just asked him, you know, Chris, what, what, what's your take on it? And so very strange uh, just what happened and, and the fact that these guys went through it and were able to talk about it. And, and thank God for guys like you were able to play these movie roles uh, with, you know, such a to yeah. do it so well. That's fantastic to us, you know. So, Michael Bay's uh, best film, I think. Um, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So how do you mentally and emotionally prepare for a movie role? I mean, some people like, don't talk to me. I'm in the role, you know, I'm in the mood in this mindset now. I mean, is that you or? No, I'm not that guy. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, I can turn it on and turn it off pretty quick. And, and, um, you know, the preparation outside of the training, which is always fun and it always, you know, kind of, uh, um, you know, can I swear on this on the show? Absolutely, go for it. It's it always unfucks the actors, right? They say at the beginning of these training sessions, you know, we got to unfuck these actors, right? So it, 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 what it does is is it, it makes it forces you to check your ego, leave it at the door, come in, you build the unit together, you build the camaraderie, you, you build the, the, the tactical work together, you start working off each other, and. Uh, so you go through that and, and that translates on screen very well. And then, um, you know, and then I, I, for me, I got to work with Mark Geist and we got to, you know, we, we spent a lot of time on the phone. We spent a lot of time uh, in Malta together and, you know, kind of figure out who you're playing, what the, what his, you know, what he's all about. And, and, uh, and then also, you know, what, their strengths were what got them through what, what, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, I mean, look, I mean, Chris had, you know, some problems, uh, you know, sorting through that experience. I know, uh, Tig did and, you know, and, and, and so there's, it's, it, we're dealing with that on screen, right? I mean, that's, that's what you're, uh, yeah, Chris had said that uh, he knew they were going to make so much money. I mean, they were, I guess there was just this discussion infighting, you know, how are we going to do this uh, movie deal? And uh, I think the producer said, stop, you guys are going to make so much money. You're going to, you know, and he got caught up in it. And he said he had a 
step away for a minute. But he, he realized this was a story that needed to be told. And they said, we're going to tell it seriously. This is not a joke to us. This is something that's going to be told and told well. And Chris was very appreciative of that. He had said, you know, just the fact that uh, uh, they're, they're going from where they were as military vets or GRS guys all of a sudden to Hollywood. They didn't know how to handle it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't know much about it. I mean, we, we, we had a lot of talks about, you know, sort of what the future looked like after post movie. And I, it, they, it was very foreign to them, you know, but the, but the, look, I mean, the, you know, the, the reality is that there's very few movies that come out that just, you know, set you on this, you know, path of, you know, riches and, you know, fame. And it's, it, it doesn't really happen that way. I mean, it's kind of, I, I'm sure they made money off it, you know, and I'm sure it launched, you know, other projects that they wanted to do or charities that they were involved right. in. But, uh, you know, I mean, it takes a huge hit and you have to, I don't know what, I haven't, I mean, I've done huge movies and, and uh, I mean, I still struggle, man. I mean, yeah. I still like... I'm like everybody else. I'm like, you know, the pandemic hit, hit me hard financially. It hit, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that are happening in Hollywood that, that, you know, are, are making it difficult for me to find work. And, you know, and so it's, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, it's not really what it's made out to be. I mean, I don't know what their experience was after the, uh, Mark and I still talk, mm -hmm. uh, but, um, so let me ask you about rejection. I mean, how do you deal with rejection? Knowing that you wanted a certain role. I mean, what's that like for you? And it's just like getting cut on a team, man. You know, like you did not make the the unit. You didn't make. Well, the, so the so here's the thing. So I have a buddy that that uh, you know did buds twice. Yeah. Right. And I liken it to that. It's a weird comparison, but you know, it either. It, it either beats you up and you become bitter, right? And that stench of bitterness is not attractive to people that, that you're looking to hire you, right? So it's, it's the kiss of death. Or it pisses you off and it motivates you to keep going and to push harder. Me, for me, it motivates me. I'm like, I mean, I, I am... Uh, a warrior in the sense that I, I don't take no. So if you say no to me, I'm going to figure out a way to change your mind. I'm going to keep moving. So, so, it, so rejection kind of fueled me. I mean, uh, I have a, one of my, my two boys is looking to get into film, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that's a conversation that we're having because he's really not seen much of the rejection. He's seen, you know, the trips to Malta to go film 13 hours. And while I'm working, he's out, you know, hanging on the beach. And, you know, I mean, he's, it, it, he's seen that part of the business. Right. right? Um, but, you know, you need thick skin for sure. I mean, well, you know, I mean, I, I heard about uh, David Niven, the actor, the British actor. He was a uh, SAS commando, right? An officer. I um, mean, he got all the ladies, made all the money, made all the Hollywood movies. And he said that uh, he had imposter syndrome. He felt that one day, and he, he wrote this in his book, that a man was going to come up behind him and tap him on the shoulder and say, sir, come here. You've been found out. Is that something you ever struggle with? I know some people have said that they just don't feel like they are who they're supposed to be. It's, it's, it's not... Uh... It's not, and it's in, and I'll tell you why. Because I, I, I feel like I had a, uh, I had a difficult uh, upbringing, mm -hmm. and uh, and I survived it, right? And I have a lot of life experience behind me that I really don't talk about often, but but I, I do. Ha I feel like I have a place in this business because I feel like I have something to contribute, you know, and as long as you have something to contribute and look, I guess if I didn't have anything to contribute, I would have died out a long time ago. Right. But I'm still in it and people are still hiring me for some reason. You know, like I said earlier, right. I, I think I'm fooling them, but it's, it's, uh, <laughs> but you know, but I think as long as you're a contributor, maybe you can avoid that. I don't know. I, I I've never really felt like I didn't belong. I sort of, uh, I feel like, my the, the thing that, that is tough for me is when 
I lose a role to somebody that might be better looking or somebody that might have more, you know, followers or somebody that, that, you know, has a movie coming out that has a little bit of hype, you know, when it's when, so when they choose somebody for those reasons over, you know, some me as an artist, that's when I really have a, a hard time with it. But, you know, but again, it motivates me because I know eventually. But, you know, I mean, you're saying like you have a purpose. It was funny because I was watching a video on an uh, interview on uh, Stephanie Zemblis Jr., right? And she said that acting was a gift from God and that she was able to connect with that audience. And she felt that it was very carnal or very sensual, this acting. But it moved her to a this high spirit, you know, of, of connection with God, this, this idea that she was serving people. And I can see that as an actor that, I mean, or just... As a veteran, you know, you have purpose and meaning and being. And if you don't, you're going to get lost and drift. But so this is a personal question is, are, are you uh, a person of some kind of faith? And if so, how do you apply it to your everyday life? Well, look, you know, so let me I'm going to just comment on what you said earlier is that is is and, and, and I'm going to change my answer for my favorite movie. Sure. I'm going to, I'm going to go to Sergeant Will Gardner because, um, you know, look, I'm not saying that it was the perfect movie about, you know, a guy suffering. I, I, I tried to add a comedic element to that too, so that it was digestible, you know, because I didn't want to sit there and beat people over the head for two hours, you know, with about, you know, a, I, wa I wanted this guy to kind of remain heroic, but that, but, but the, the direct messages and, and this is no exaggeration, thousands of direct messages from veterans going you got me into rehab you got me back you 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 know i sat there and cried through this whole movie and and, and you know it's it's brought up so many things that i realized i haven't dealt with thank you messages this that can you recommend a, a treatment center can you you know in and, and it was in that moment that you know you, that's when you go oh there is a much higher value that mm -hmm. you in this industry that that you know you can re, you can attain it's like it's I, it, when i realized that, that the power of film to, to actually create this kind of change or inspiration for people is um, uh you know the, i mean well i that, thought i thought the scene with uh you and your your buddy uh in the uh coffee shop you have an ice cream and so it's freaking just ice cream or something I, I don't remember what the line was it's pretty funny the interaction with your buddy uh your, your partner in the movie will garner yeah. you know you're pushing him around the grocery cart and yeah. i got the comedic elements of that for sure and then yeah. you didn't tie up the end you know uh it was almost kind of open ending and it's not this happy ending like um a lot of movies are supposed to be you know? yeah yeah that's yeah, what we yeah. want yeah, I liked it. I liked it that way, actually. But but that but that that was very spiritual meant for me. I mean, you know, I was talking to veterans. I was on the phone with them. I mean, it was like it was really. Uh, uh, and yes, I do uh, have. I I I do believe uh, that there is a higher power, and and uh, and I turn to that higher power often. You know. Well, let me ask you about crisis moment and, and I, I don't mean in the sense that you have a mental breakdown and, and you know leave california or something like that but you know um did you have a an obstacle a major obstacle in your career where you just said i, I can't do this anymore and i'm just going to walk away or if you did you know how did you gain control of that and go back into the fight i mean was it a rejection movie or was it a, a divorce or something and, and and so for our audience you know we have to check ourselves and we have to uh be able to regulate our emotions and we have to call friends if sometimes but what do you do um you know there were there were i quit twice okay um and packed it in and swore i was never gonna go back uh and it was primarily because it wasn't uh sinking with what I wanted in life. It wasn't allowing me to get to where I wanted in life. So, so the, I just, in, in short, I wasn't uh, making the money to get me to where I could support a family that I wanted to create. And, you know, and things. So I did give up a couple of times, but I went back to it because, uh, 
you know, I just, again, I felt like uh, I believed what I was saying, you know, my, when, when my most fearful moments in my career are when I'm on camera and I don't believe what I'm saying, you know, and that's in, and it's like, I can't even explain it to you, man. I mean, it's terrifying because there's, you have people all around you. There's 150 people around you and an actor in front of you and actors over here and everybody's watching you. And if you don't believe what you're saying, you're lying. Right. Yeah. And, and that's when, that's when I become most uh, insecure and, and, uh, you know, I had, I had, I did have a moment where it, in the Clooney movie where like, uh, he was, you know, it was, the, I was the very first scene of the film and, and, uh, I was on the phone with my kid talking about my alcoholism and that I quit. I was lying to him. I had a drink and I told him I quit. And, uh, and I looked up and Clooney and, and Ben Affleck were at the monitor you know, staring at me, watching me. And I was like, oh my <laughs> God, this is, uh, this is a little freaky. But, um, you know, and then you, you, you put yourself in check and go, okay, just find yourself in the center. So, um, but you know, it's really uh, it's when I'm lying to my, you know, that, that 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 that's a scary thing for me. But 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 in terms of your question, I I, I just uh, I realized that I needed to make money to have my family. I needed to. There were things in life that I wanted, and it wasn't giving it to me. And then I went back and just said, keep fucking, you know, keep going. Don't give up. Yeah. And, uh, well, let's ask a different question. Yeah. Then. I mean, what's the most beautiful moment you've had in movie making or a beautiful moment being in the community of actors, uh, you know, where there's maybe some connection with other actors or uh, something that you rose to the level that you, you, you thought you could, what's the most beautiful moment for you? I, well, you know, um, I had a moment, uh, at the and I tell this often in interviews because it, it is, a, it, it was impactful for me, but I, I had a moment, uh, at the premiere of Private Ryan, um, where uh, we were sitting in, in the audience and I'm sitting with a bunch of veterans of that war, all 90. And, uh, and that first scene came on, that first battle scene on the beach. And when that was over, I turned and looked at these guys and they were cheers, their faces were yeah. and they were sitting there you know watch it just dumbfounded and uh and i remember thinking oh my god this is gonna this is gonna start a whole conversation that these guys have been sitting on for for years decades i mean and, and uh and i remember thinking this is a pretty special moment yeah, that, that movie was fantastic. And not just kudos to, you know, uh, Spielberg, but to you guys. I mean, I, I watched that movie twice on the same day. I, I didn't know what I was getting into. Sat yeah. in my chair, looked at my brother, said, oh, my God, I've got to go get another ticket. And I did. Yeah. And I mean, it was gut wrenching. But uh, what you guys did, it was fantastic. I mean, that was a wonderful, wonderful movie. Well made. You know, I don't think we realized what we were making, to tell you the truth. But, really? Well, I, you know, there were so there's always shenanigans on set. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't think we quite realized how impactful that film was going to be. I think he got a lot of good actors. I don't know that, that, uh, um, I don't know that, that, that we all realized that it was going to, like I said, start this conversation. I think the New York times did an article about, you know, how it movies like that sort of, you know, force these these veterans of that war to open up, uh, you know, about experiences they've been sitting on, you know, and and couldn't talk about, you know, and yeah, because uh, we were kids. I mean, you know, I mean, may, maybe I'm wrong. I'm speaking. I'm, you know, I'm, just, I'm presuming that that they didn't. We all didn't realize what we were doing, but maybe Spielberg. Did. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's just kind of weird. I, I think like the Hollywood in a lot of ways shifts the culture, right? It's written by writers and then they change culture probably 
not always directly, but indirectly. And then it influences so many people. We want to wear those clothes. We want to be those guys. And, and so that's kind of cool. I mean, if you can make it, it, it's, it's timely in a sense. I think that it was a movie that we needed at that time. Yeah. Uh, these guys had their moment. I mean, look at Vietnam. People came back and they're spat on, right? And so now we have these movies. What did we have in the 1970s? I mean, we had like, uh, oh, I don't know. There's so many movies with uh, Ron Winkler, Henry Winkler, and et cetera, you know, um, that people didn't, or the one with the Nick Nolte, right? Mm-hmm. So so what, what was the most impactful film for you that you've seen? You know, it's really interesting to me, as far as an impactful film and then the ones with you in it, uh, the most impactful for me was 13 Hours. Actually, one of the guys in my unit, uh, David Ubbin, was, uh, you know, the uh, Department of State guy. Uh, mm-hmm. He was in my my military unit when he separated and got that job. And I just remember uh, uh, him telling me he got the job. And I said, what do you think? And he said, man, we did not get a lot of training. They gave us some armor, two weeks of schooling, and we're gone. And I said, holy cow. And then it happened on TV. And I said, this is crazy. But that movie was incredible, uh, the telling of it. Saving Private Ryan, but I would have to say Sergeant Will Gardner was quite good to me. And I think a lot of people didn't like the movie, but I did. And I could relate to it in a lot of ways. I mean, I was scrolling through the comments on YouTube and people saying, thank God for this movie. This movie saved my life or I can relate to this movie or I'm crying tears. I, I watched this movie for two hours and I'm crying throughout the whole thing. That was powerful. So it's not always these Hollywood blockbusters that resonate, but it resonated with me because I could understand this, what I call a shambling mess of a man who had a life and that life was taken away uh, because he served. And then he's reading poetry, but it shows that he's an educated person. He's not this dumb man. I mean, he's a very profound thinker. And so I can kind of relate to that. Just the the idea that a veteran is a, a person who has took a lot of hits, but he's also very resilient. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why we like warriors. I mean, they're, they're the guys who take fights to the world. And warriors could be anywhere. It could be a plumber standing up for his rights, you know, at mm-hmm. work, or it could be mm-hmm. a janitor, or it could be a Delta operator. But were, uh, you, did, were you involved in, in martial arts? Were you? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What, what, what uh, jiu jitsu? So, uh, I, yeah, I've, I've done a plethora. I've done Wing Chun, I've done karate, I've done boxing. Uh, and uh, I wrote a book about some of my experiences, but I could relate to it, you know, because I've been out there in the street and I've done it and uh, it's different. Um, you can theorize about things, but when you actually get out there and do it, it becomes different. It's no longer theory. Yeah. And then yeah. that's the application of what you've learned your entire life, just like acting. And then you put it to the test and say, does this work or does it doesn't work? It's, it's interesting. You know, my kids uh, are, are my oldest in particular, she was really interested in boxing. I boxed for a long time. And, you know, I, I say this to him all the time. I'm like, you got to, you can train, you got to train, you train, you train. But eventually it's like working on a car, right? You, you, you don't, you're not going to work on the car. Just leave it in the garage. You got to take it out and drive it. Yeah. You know? so that's, and then, it, and then your training starts all over again. Because there's a whole, I know a lot of guys, I mean, including myself, it's, you know, when, when, you've spent so much time working on technique, you get in the ring with somebody in front of you and suddenly everything you've learned goes out the window and you, now you're fighting your, your breath and your, your heart rate and your anxiety and you're trying to, to find your technique again and, you know, implement it in this in the situation. And uh, I really love uh, martial arts for that reason. It's a real kind of, um, it does. And it's the difference between what I call theorists and practitioners and the theorists, they're out there, you know, Steven Seagal and all the guys. And that's why we watch his movies, because we want to say, see someone who's not credible. We want to laugh at that. But when we see something that is, uh, you know, these guys out there, they're doing a great job on film like Bruce Lee or whatever. But yeah, you get in the ring and it's gross motor skills. It's not some secret technique. You just rely on what you've learned in practice over and over and over again. A basic yeah. punch, a basic uppercut, basic, you know, whatever, front kick. And that's it. And everything else is, it's not ballet, man. It's pretty gross and visceral and raw. And uh, that's the way it ends up sometimes, right on the street, you know, right on the floor. But acting, I think, can be the same because you're getting into something you don't know anything about and you don't know how it's going to pan out. And it's going to change. The dynamic is going to change. And all you can control is you, your breathing. You know, they say when you get in trouble in the ring, you know, you, 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 
resort back to your technique, right? right. Go back to go back to your basics, and it's yeah. the same with acting. I mean, there really is a. Uh, it's not like people think. You you can't just jump in it and, and be amazing. I mean, maybe some people can. I can't. The majority of people can't. There is a technique, and there is you know there are ways to apply these uh, kind of you know. Uh, right. And it, I meant not uh, techniques, but secret technique, like in the karate kid where he's just crane kick. It's not going to be like that, man. It's right. it's that's the basics. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so we see you working out all the time, right? At the gym. And, uh, you know, I, I saw some YouTube videos of you doing that real cool stuff. So have you always been athletic? Is that something you've always done or is that something you picked up just for the Hollywood movie? World? No, I'm pretty I've, I've always been. I mean, I was heavily in sports when I was growing mm -hmm. up and, and uh you know, like I said, I found boxing. I wish I would have found MMA uh, earlier because I, I felt I was a little late in discovering that. I'm a huge fan, but um, but I I, I I I just kind of went to weightlifting and boxing, which which uh, so I'll, I'll I'll hit the weights for movies, but then um, you know my love is really getting in the ring. I, I love. All right, so let, let's ask, <laughs> who's your money on, Zuck? Or Elon Musk. Oh my Who, God! I mean, or come on, Elon. can you believe that? I know, I know. I don't even so, know what's happening. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm going to put my money on uh, Elon. I don't I know. Think I think mean, Elon too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the fact that he he said he wants to do it, he's, he's probably got some you know hidden talent or, that we're not aware of. It's so, yeah. So, um, as far as your big break. I mean, it's, it seems to me, just speaking to you, that uh, you you have all these great movies, but it's just a grind. You have to work all the time, and I think people have these ideas that somehow you make millions of dollars and you're always fine, but it, there's taxes and all the obligations you have, your agent, etc. And so, but it sounds like you also do because you you have a love for it, right? There's a passion here. Isn't I do it? have a love for it. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And and you know, I, I, I of of my entire body of work, I'd say you know. 75% of it were jobs that, that I was beside myself, you know, to, to have been given the opportunity to do. 25% were money jobs that, um, you know, and very questionable uh, I, I, things that, you know, you go, oh, God, oh, no one's ever going to see this. And then everybody sees it. I mean, I did this one movie that I can't, I'm not going to say. But I went to uh, I went to one of the, the stores on base in, in Iraq, and, and they had seven hundred thousand copies of this movie on Iraq. <laughs> oh my God! It's out. Uh, well, you but know, the, I saw the I saw the movie Spectral, and I said, "Why didn't Why didn't I hear about this movie?" And then that you was had your, your, but Yeah, I don't know what happened with that film. We we in fact, so one of the actors. Um, from Spectral, Clay Crawford is one of my dear friends that I've known for. for he, we did the Great Raid together. Uh, we did Spectral together. We did um, uh, this movie that's coming out, The Channel, mm -hmm. which, by the way, um, I, I, I think everyone, especially this fan base, your, your fans, will love. Um, and uh, where was I going with this? Uh, oh, and he and so he and I did Spectral together. And uh, and that was a seventy million dollar movie. And I yeah, thought, hey, man, I mean, it was it was good special effects, yeah. and it was great, great uh, CQB. I mean, it was good. I mean, it yeah. was great, man. A lot of action, mm -hmm. good, good, good gunplay. I was like, this is good. Why did I not hear about this movie? Yeah, I don't know. I don't so know. weird. And he had uh, James Badgedale. What, what's his name? James, James Badgedale. Yeah, another yeah. great friend of ours. Who was in Thirteen Hours? Yeah, yeah, Gr great stuff, man. So, yeah. um, do you ever get nervous? before every audition i don't really uh you know like i said i get nervous when i'm lying if i don't yeah. do what i'm doing i get nervous and, yeah. and, and it's and it's uh you know and often uh people don't really know that i'm nervous but yeah. you know um if i'm working with actors that i don't believe also makes me nervous because i don't want to do bad work and i don't want people to go oh god or you know um so the, the outside of that i don't really um i don't get nervous i get ex and i don't get starstruck either you uh -huh. know I, i'm uh there's there's been 
one time that I, I thought I, that I got a little uh, starstruck, I met De Niro and I went in and, and did a, I had about an hour meeting with him and Leonardo DiCaprio. And when I walked in the room, I didn't know Leonardo DiCaprio was going to be in the room. And, and um, I walked in and went, holy shit. Ooh, okay. This is a, uh, this is what you call a power meeting. All right. So, you know, when they, and I got to, uh, to work, play with those guys for a while and, and that was fun, but, um, yeah, as a rule, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm at ease, man. I'm, I feel at home, you know, I think it's great, man, that you can do that. Yeah. I had, uh, I had, uh, lunch at a cafe and Chris Isaac, the singer was in there and, uh, we were all sitting down eating and he got up paid. And then as soon as he walked out, every single woman jumped up and they ran to the windows and put their faces against the windows. Says, oh, my God, this guy's so looking good looking. I, I was laughing because everyone was trying to behave themselves while he was there. You know, act normal, act normal. But no one is acting normal. Precisely. Uh, yeah, that's great, man. Uh, well, is there anything I missed, man? Any any thoughts at all on uh, what you've got going on as projects? Uh, anything we should know? I know the channel's coming out and I really want to watch. I think it's coming out on the 14th and maybe the 16th. Yeah, I mean, and it's available on iTunes, uh, pre-selling on iTunes right now. Um, yeah, the channel's great, and uh, I'm doing another movie for the same company called Osiris right now, which is uh, very much like Alien 2. It's like okay. some former military contractors in the story uh, wake up on a uh, – come to on an alien – encapsulated on an alien ship and, and – uh, it's just a lot of it's a lot of weapons work. And, I, like, I don't know if you want to keep doing those roles. I love them. I mean, I saw you I in love. um Captain Roberts. Was that was that the was that the right? Yeah. 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 That was Phillips. great. Yeah, Captain yeah. Phillips. That's what it was. Thank you. Thanks for remind, reminding yeah. me. And um you seem so confident in that that movie. I mean, in those roles, you project yourself as a man of strength. And I and your voice is very low and it's great and you come off as credible that's important to veterans you know uh you, you see some movies you're like oh come on and you know you, i think it was um uh i can't even name, name well it was john wayne you know he knocked these guys down but like is he really that credible is he believable richard burton you know knocked a guy out with one fist in this movie he's holding a drink in another hand that this is just plain silly but uh you don't come across as anything other than very credible and i think that's why you have that huge fan base in the uh, military law enforcement community. Oh, thanks, man. I mean, you know, we're trying to cast this Osiris film right now, and, and I'm producing that also. And, and uh, you know, there's a, uh, when we were putting our list together of guys that could play, uh, you know, special operators, you know, or, or former, you know, sort of, I don't know, CAG guys or SEALs or whatever, um, there's not a lot. In Hollywood, I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's interesting how few guys I kind of believe in those roles, you know. I mean, and, and uh, you know, it's worked out great for me because I, I I'm a uh, you know, like I said, I love doing it. And, uh, but but yeah, you're right. It's funny. It's it's like you you know when when somebody comes along that nails it, you know, you go ah yeah. yeah. Feeling, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think I think you're doing it. So I'm going to stop geeking out here, and uh, you know I, I'm a big fan, and I'm, I'm glad you came on. Thank, thankfully, uh, we got you on here, um, guys. If you do not know of Max Martini and his movies, please check them out, man. You know I'm going to put the movies in the uh, notes down on YouTube here, and check them out. Uh, he's got the channel coming out very very soon. I think it's next week or the week after, and that is awesome. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, tell your friends about We Fight Monsters, where we talk to some really cool guests about fighting literal and figurative monsters, whether it's in Hollywood and trying to find your place in the world and find your place anywhere. But uh, get out there and kick some ass. God bless you all and take care.